My name's Starsky and welcome to From The Studio on Clubbing TV and in this episode I'm going to be attempting to make some minimal techno with a minuscule synth. This is the Numono Kun. Everything you heard there was played by using what I've got on the desk in front of me. Um, that's the Roland TR09 for the drums and three new monos for everything else. And as you can see, it's really, really small. And it's about the size of the palm of my hand and it's got those instant Instagrammable good looks. Add a plant or two and you've got yourself a, an instant huge following. We've got these eight buttons at the bottom for selecting modes and then you change the parameter or the value using this knob. So as I said, it's a fully featured synth with functions you'd expect on something much larger. It's got two really flexible oscillators with loads of options for wave shapes. It's got four envelopes with an LFO. It's got a multi-mode filter with a low pass, band pass, high pass and notch, plus a choice of two pole or four pole. You've got linear and non-linear modes on all of them as well. On top of that, it's got an FM engine to get those really nasty, harsh sort of digital tones. And that's got four operators going through a choice of 11 algorithms. Plus it's got a granular engine. <laughs> so you can sample stuff and create all sorts of weirdness as you heard in the intro track. And then it's got a pretty flexible sequencer as well with up to 32 steps per pattern. And I think that might just about covers it, or unless I mention uh, the, the really flexible modulation routine it's got on it and access to every single parameter via MIDI. So you can control everything from a control surface or another synth if you want to. Um, oh, and you can put it in polyphonic mode if you've got a few of them um, to make yourself a sort of miniature polysynth. So there's a lot more that we can look at on this than we can in this episode, but let's take a quick look at some of the basic functions and how you can access all those parameters with such, um, such a tiny interface. First thing you need to do when you got anything like this is to understand how to navigate the menus. Uh, on this, there's a, a clever system that has three main modes, and these are accessed by these buttons at the bottom down here. The whole synth is based on a chip design for smart speakers, which are um, what these names here relate to, play, select, volume plus, and volume minus. So these aren't actually the volume buttons, which is very confusing when you first get out and you try to play it. But anyway, there are three modes, one for the synth, one for the sequencer and one for loading and saving settings and uh, system settings as well. We can see the first eight submenus, oscillator one, oscillator two, mix, envelope one and two, LFO, filter, etc., etc. You can read it even though it's small, but it doesn't show up so well on the camera. So let's take a look at oscillator one. Press the menu button and then button one. We've got sawtooth, sign, sample and hold, which is random, a bit like noise. Square and the triangle. We've got white noise, pink noise, which is a bit darker sounding. We've got FM, so we can access the FM synth from it as well. And then auxiliary inputs from the left and right, so you can connect things in through the left and right here. To add the second oscillate, we go back to the main menu and now select the mix, go to the mix. So that's the basis for the lead sound for the intro track. Really simple, but nice and effective. So let's use that to create a short sequence. To access the sequence set, we press the play button down here, and we can see which patterns we've got here. We've got sequence of one play there, sequence of two, so you can flick through them quickly with these two buttons on the left. And we'll just turn some of the steps on and off. Let's turn one, three, whatever that is, six and seven on. Let's go to play. So that's working, now let's tune them. So back to the main menu, button five takes us to tune, and we can see the ones that are, that are on, so we can 
push the button and just change the tuning of it. Just sort of do it randomly. Let's speed that up. We can go into mode seven, BPM factor. Let's double the speed of it. Let's go back into play. So it's really simple, but it's also really flexible. Once you've got a nice little pattern, you can go in and you can do all sorts of things. You can add some glide, you can sync it to your door, you can double or half the speed as we've just shown there. You can change the number of steps. You, there's loads of other options. But let's settle on something now and create the basis um, of our minimal techno track. After a little bit of tweaking around, I think that sounds quite nice. So it's time now to, uh, to add the beat. Here I'm going to keep things basic and minimal, I'm not going to go for huge soundscapes and great big drops and builds. I'm going to stick to using the trusty TR909 sounds like we heard earlier, which are nice and clean and crisp. And then I'll add a few effects to create some space, plus a little distortion to dirty things up a bit. Um, but I'll do that in the door once I'm happy with the beat. Let's see what we've got so far, we've got just a kick. I think I'm going to choose a tempo of 132 BPM. Let's turn the tempo up. Let's add some closed hat, shall we? So instrument select, closed hat, play. And then maybe let's add some sort of syncopated rhythm with the toms. Sounding quite nice, sounding like a sort of typical 909 style beat, because I suppose that's what it is. Let's add some rim shots as well then. That sounds even more like a classic old track, doesn't it? Those rim shots are brilliant. Really like this thing. It's sort of instant vibe. So I'm happy with that. It's sounding nice. I'm gonna head over to the door now to add a little saturation and reverb. Cool, I like that. It's quite tough and minimal. Um, so now it's time to add some sort of background pads or something like that and for that I'm going to use the granular engine on another one of these Nomonos so I can get something really sort of gritty and grainy and dirty. And the first thing you need to do is record something and you can use the onboard mic um, or you could do it properly using the audio input here but the mic here will be fine so let's record something. A clubbing, a clubbing, a clubbing, a clubbing. And I know I've got a voice like bathing in a warm silk bath, haven't I? Yeah. But now we've got this, we can sort of play around with it. So something around there sounds quite nice. So let's use that as the basis for Oscillator 1 and then create a patch with it. So when I play this now, it should be an Oscillator 1 and we should get a vocal sound. There you go, it's pretty good. So that's me being a granular synth. So let's add that to the track. So all in all, that sound in the parts, I mean, it's nice and gritty, some interesting textures. We've got all those little interesting samples we can throw over the top as well. So I think it's time to start putting it all together and put some finishing touches on it. So firstly, maybe add a little more interest to the rhythm track, just making a little percussive tone with the final synth here. I've added a little delay and some onboard effects. Let's have a listen to that. So yeah, it's super simple, but it's something that the TR909 or the TR09 can't do on its own. So it takes it away from being just a sort of a simple pattern from a drum machine. Really basic stuff. And now let's start to add some interest to each of the parts by tweaking to add some variation without adding additional parts. We are trying to do something minimal after all. <laughs> And 
what I'm showing there is all the variation you can get from one tone. And if you're doing something minimal, you don't want to be stacking part on top of part on top of part. You want to have one or two parts that you tweak and you play around with to sort of have a constantly evolving tone from the from the same part, really. So let's try something like that as well on the on the main lead line. So again, all sorts of little madness you can get from there. You've got to be sort of careful with mad stuff. But it's nice to be able to have all those variations, all those little sounds that can come into your track without adding new tones. So you can do all that via automation using these because they've got every single parameter accessible via MIDI. But I've recorded all my tweaks in live because if I use automation, I tend to go back and then retweak and retweak and get really obsessive over the smallest part that no one else will ever hear. So I've just sort of thrown them together. And um, what I'll do is I'll play that intro track again so you can hear all the sort of bits I've put in there. But it's all squeezed in. If you're gonna do a minimal track, you're not gonna put everything in 20 seconds. It's gonna sort of evolve over time. But let's have a listen to what the whole thing sounds like shall we So all in all, a fun afternoon's play and not a bad sound, a little track at the end of it, I don't think. But, you know, is it for you? Well, I have to say, I was really surprised with how deep this little unit goes. Uh, and the fact that you can use it on its own without any other controller, and you can use any power bank to supply it with power, makes it a truly portable synth. Along with its good, uh, good looks, makes it ideal for those creating music in the great outdoors. Uh, nature style with Instagram posts and a, and a nice pot plant. <laughs> it really looks quite nice. I think it's got a real charm. But as with anything this small, it's a little bit fiddly to use. Uh, although you can access all the parameters with a large controller, if you do have a large controller handy, you might want to use that just to play a soft synth. So I think its strength really does lie in its portability. The pocket operators, which I've got a couple here, have been a great success, and they've got nowhere near the flexibility of the sound engine in this. Um, it's 95 US dollars, which um, I think it was down to 85 recently. So it's well within birthday or Christmas present money. Um, so maybe get your loved ones to check out this episode on the Club in TV official YouTube channel and make sure they do it just before Christmas. Uh, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll see what I can do to answer them. I've also got um, a much sort of deeper dive of this on my Starsky Car YouTube channel, which is, uh, which is well worth checking out if you are interested in it. So I'll see you in the next episode of From the Studio. <laughs>